G'day Internet, Max Wright here and I'm really bummed and sad today. So I just made an amazing interview with uh, Ben, uh, ben Crypto BitBoy and uh, he was just bro dropping bombs. I was dropping bombs, we were vibing off each other. I checked the recording and his video didn't work and my audio didn't work. And I'm like, oh man, that's just a bummer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back now and re-record my pieces and then we've just got the audio from Ben. So this will be a little bit disjointed, which is a bit sad, but uh, I'll try and keep it nice and clean. So here we go, Ben, welcome to the show. Absolutely, thanks for having me. It's always a good day to talk crypto. So Ben, here we are, it's the, you know, the middle of June, Bitcoin's just crashed down to $20,000 and it's just a sea of bleakness out everywhere you see it. Your channel was one of those who uh, predicted this, as was mine. Tell me, what are the causes? Have we bottomed out yet? Where do we go from here? I guess that's probably the best place to start would be, you know, where do we go from here? Because that, that'll give people, uh, you know, a lot of perspective. Uh, we believe based on history, and you'll find in a lot of this answer, I lean on history. I, I lean on the traditional Bitcoin four-year cycles based on the having. They've been almost identical, you know, for three cycles in a row. And right now we're exactly where we should be. This should put us bottoming out uh, at the end of November. So far, if you go back to the last two bear markets, the bottom occurred within three to five weeks after the midterm elections, both in 2014 and 2018. Uh, and so right now we're right on target time-wise and event-wise when it comes to the midterms to see a bottom somewhere in November or possibly early December of this year. So I think there is potential. Maybe it could run out a little bit longer, maybe quarter one of, of 2023, but I definitely see us bottoming um, you know, before the end of quarter one, 2023, most likely quarter four of 2022. Uh, so because we lean so heavily on those Bitcoin cycles, uh, we told people last year, I remember I was on, uh, you know, I like to tell people this story, like I was on Crypto Banner with Ran and, uh, you know, Kyle Chasse, a guy I really like, uh, he, he from Master Ventures, he was on the show. Uh, there were a couple guys that uh, Ran has regular guests on, Crypto Casey was on the show and Everybody on there, except for me and Crypto Casey, were basically saying that, um, you know, there was going to be no bear market. They were saying there's going to be no bear market. It's too much adoption. Bitcoin's too mainstream. Like the cycles are dead. This is it. It's only going up from here. And, and I was very quick to say, guys, that's just not true. We've never seen anything in history to suggest that these cycles are ending. And so sure enough, they, I was literally laughed at for saying that. And here we are, 2022. The market is not good. It's dropping. We're right on track for an 85% drawdown, which would put us at about $10,300. I don't know if we get below 14K. That 14 to 17K is really, I think, a strong level that I'm looking at. Um, but, you know, in April, in, in January, we said on my Twitter that, hey, guys, Bitcoin can go below 20K. Don't think that it can't. People laughed at me. Beginning of April, I said, guys, I'm officially calling this a bear market. I think April 12th maybe have been the day that I did that. This is officially a bear market. We're going down probably much lower. And so if you watch my channel, you are prepared for this. And, um, you know, that's what we try to do to our audience is show them the only way you can judge what's going to happen in the future is based on taking all the information from what has already occurred in the past. And that usually is a pretty good recipe, uh, you know, in both technicals and fundamentals to kind of figure out where this market is going. Yeah, fair. So on that topic of people use the thing, you know, adoption is so high, it has to go up. Adoption is high, is always the highest just before the crash. So if you look back to 2017, you look back to 2013, just as Bitcoin's going, par it's going parabolic in price because so many people are rushing in, the number of users is, is exploding, that's when the crash happens. So the, the peak uh, infusion of users is actually often a sign that we're near the end. Now, I did want to talk about um, the four-year cycle a little bit here. So I've been, been following the, uh, the four-year cycle for many, many years. I first got involved in Bitcoin in 2012, been using it a lot. But what was constant throughout those periods is Bitcoin was invented in 2009. It was after the 2008 global financial crisis, the COVID crisis in 2020, that was papered over. And so Bitcoin's never really seen a serious economic crisis. And so I'm expecting um, the, you know, the regression brand or the rainbow chart or all the different ways you can call it, the 200 week moving averages, the 300 week moving averages, all of those things, I'm expecting them to be beat to the lower end because for the first time ever, the macro cycle is just so viciously against all financial assets, including Bitcoin. How much does the macro cycle and the macro environment uh, tie into how you view this? Well, uh, a mixture of both. I definitely pay attention to the macro for sure. And I, I think that 
right now we're definitely seeing uh, the macro playing a big role in this downswing of Bitcoin. But, you know, I mean, the famous chart or the famous uh, quote is, you know, you show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. Um, so, you know, predictably, this was going to be happening. So whatever is going on surrounding it in the macro level, you know, some people are going to say that's what's causing it. Other people would say that, well, it's just a coincidence. Uh, you know, the technicals were calling for Bitcoin to go down. It was overheated. That's that's what happens. We get a Bitcoin halving. There's a supply shock. The price gets overheated. The retail comes in and then it's got to cool off and then slowly build back up. And um, so what's really interesting um, with the macro stuff is, you know, I, I said last year, this could be the worst bear market in history. Why? Well, when you looked at what we had for the pandemic. Now, I will say this also. People said the pandemic was something that we never, ever, ever seen before. And it turned out to be really, really bullish for Bitcoin. Why? Because we had quantitative easing going on. Money printing was going on. And then on top of that, the dollar was getting weaker, which was supercharging Bitcoin to be stronger. Well, now we're in the exact opposite. We're heading towards recession. We're already in recession, many people would say. And now we've got quantitative tightening. Now we have a stronger dollar. And now we've got like the extreme bear case going on, the most pain, because that's bad for Bitcoin. When the dollar is strong, Bitcoin is weaker. When, you know, the dollar is weak, Bitcoin is stronger. So I, I do think that on some level, the macros are, be, are playing out. But, you know, wh what's really interesting is if you think about what I said earlier about the midterm elections, you know, you could almost make the argument that, you know, somebody actually crypto savvy, a guy who is very bearish on Bitcoin, you know, he, he made this uh, argument to me that, you know, maybe we're not on a four year having cycle with Bitcoin. Maybe it's a four year election cycle, because what's interesting is the election years, you know, tend to fall right there in with, uh, you know, the tops of Bitcoin or where the bull markets begin. And then the bottoms coincide with midterm elections. So I, I, I tend to think that that's Probably not true. I do think that the Bitcoin having the supply shock of cutting the production in half every four years is the main driver. Um, but, you know, those things probably do factor into some level. Like I said, after the midterm elections, we usually get the bottom. Um, after the presidential elections, you know, we tend to get the top, uh, you know, the next year. So I think all that factors in. But I, I do think, especially when it comes to looking at correlation, when you look at correlation with NASDAQ, that's what everybody likes to do, because right now the correlation is very high. It's it's slipping a little bit because Bitcoin is dropping more dramatically than uh, the stock market is, even though it is dropping dramatically as well. But people look back at the, the correlation of NASDAQ and Bitcoin, and there are periods of time where it's very correlated. And then you have other periods of time where it's not correlated at all. If you go back to 2018, NASDAQ was straight up the parabola there. And Bitcoin was going straight down into a bear market. So when you really look at how these economic factors shape out, uh, what you're looking at is, I think, some very coincidental stuff. You, you have Bitcoin should have topped in quarter four of last year. We called that for two years. For two years, we said the top of Bitcoin, the top of crypto would be in quarter four of 2021. We saw it. We were looking for a higher number. We thought it was going to get 100,000. We were wrong there. But the timing, we had it nailed perfectly. And we should start a bear market heading into 2022. Well, it just so happens in November of 2021, the Fed comes out and says, guys, we're aggressively going to raise the interest rates. And in December, they made another announcement about it. So what you had is you had the, the Fed moving us towards recession. You know, we talk about a long tail problem of inflation versus a short tail problem of an economic crash by trying to fix inflation, which is kind of the juxtaposition of, of where we're at right now. But it just so happened that the macroeconomic factors were moving at the same exact pace that Bitcoin usually goes at. So right now we should see Bitcoin dropping traditionally, but we also have a recession. So that might be speeding it up a little bit, but we would be in a bear market, in my opinion, for Bitcoin, whether or not we had seen a recession. Um, because I, in 2018, we didn't have a recession and the price went down. Uh, so that, that's kind of how I see it all factoring together. It's it's a big puzzle and there's a lot of pieces and trying to figure out which pieces fit exactly is probably about impossible. But we can make, you know, general, you know, infer inferences of, uh, you know, what we think is going to happen. Yeah, some really good points in there. A lot of good points in there, actually. Um, and I, I, I use the word vectors. So I'm just adding up all these vectors. There's interest rates. There's all these different things. I call them vectors. And our job, I guess, to understand where the markets are going is to add up all of those vectors, give them a magnitude, give them a direction, and see how they all fight together and to see where we end up. I actually love that. I get the feeling that you do, too. So tell me, 
you know, the macro is all about right now, unfortunately, just everything's correlated. And it's the big question is, when is the Fed going to pivot? So my question for you is, do you have kind of a gut feeling about when they're going to pivot? Do you, are there signposts that you're looking for to get a little bit of a heads up that they're going to pivot? What do you think they're looking at before they say, oh, shit, we've gone too far. Let's do let's do the opposite. Yeah. So it's very interesting. They're aggressively raising right now. Uh, you know, the the. The thought is the Wednesday meeting, 75 basis points is where they go. There's been whispers of 100, which that would rock the market, definitely send us down into a lower leg. But I think right now it seems pretty secure. They're doing 75. And uh, that's going to be, I think a lot of people are expecting 50. But if you've seen the leak, you're expecting 75. It just depends on how much people are paying to the, attention to the market. You know, we could get a, another aggressive leg down for the overall markets if people are not seeing this coming. But what I would say is this. I believe that we will raise interest rates until it's above 2%, maybe 2.5%. So if you look at the Fed meeting schedule, uh, there is a meeting either at the end of the first, uh, sometime in the second week of December, I believe. I believe, well, we've already told you we believe we're going to bottom the end of November. When we look at this Fed meeting that I believe is the second week of December, I think that's when we get the announcement of the QE coming back the QT going away. So the quantitative easing, the printing of money, it's going to come back. They have no choice but to do it. And, and what's really interesting about this midterm election is, you know, right now with the current economic state, you know, the economy is the number one determining factor of which ways the elections swing. And when you're in down economic times, they swing the opposite direction. So we'll probably have a lot of changes in the Senate and in Congress, uh, you know, coming in November. How does that play into all of this? How does that play into crypto regulation? How does that play into innovation? How does that play into the SEC, the CFTC? We know the big executive order should be out by the end of this year, kind of like uh, parsing out who's going to be in charge of what. And so all of those things together, um, you know, make me very bullish for not necessarily next year, because I think next year we're going to see a lot of rebuilding and a lot of sideways action, but really still extremely bullish that the four-year cycle schedule is going to continue at least for another cycle to where by the end of 2024, we should be approaching new all-time highs uh, or, or possibly slightly passing them. And then 2025 will be an incredible year. I think uh, another thing that I believe, I know I'm kind of getting a little bit a, a away from your question here. I think I already answered that. But the other thing that I see coming is we talked a lot about diminishing returns, how every bull cycle for Bitcoin has had you know, significantly less returns than the one before. And if you look at the 2014 top, it was about uh, $1,100 or $1,200, somewhere in that range. And then it was an 18X to $20,000 in the 2017 top. So you had an 18X basically. And then we got 69K, which is basically a three and a half X. So a 350% gain um, over the previous one or however that works, 450%, however it works. I always get the percentages confused when I'm doing that math. Um, but the, the fact is, is that I think we're, we might see the breakup of the diminished returns, and we may actually get more than 3.5x on the next bull cycle, potentially. I'm not ready to commit to that, but I'm leaving an open mind that we could see Bitcoin go up in the range of three, dollars $400,000. Uh, it would basically have to go to... Um, it would basically have to go to $250,000 to be able to beat the, the returns of the last bull market. And I do think that is possible because I do think there was a lot of suppression at the end of this bull run. If you look at the Elon Musk uh, gov you know, environmental tweets in May that ended up sending the market down, it really stifled things. I think it would have gone up more. I think it would have gone up over 100K. So that's something uh, to, to watch as well. Yeah, and actually, funnily enough, I am actually willing to commit to that bigger uh, multiple. I think um, when we come out of this, this, we're going to go through a very, very rough time. And when we come out of that, that's, that's a big cleansing in, a moment for the entire environment. Um, it's just like a, you know, a forest fire that has a scrub growing up. It's just got to clear all that out so that the new forest can grow. And a recession will be very, very healing for the economy, in my opinion. Uh, once all these macro issues have been dealt with, the misallocation of resources are fixed, 
we're going to see two things. One, the economy is going to be in a much better position to grow. But two, the Fed's going to go and stick their nose in it again and start printing to get us out of this. And I've noticed that when, when the, spigots are, the printing spigots are turned on and the money is flowing, then the Bitcoin price absolutely runs. And so I'm expecting a really, really good cycle out of the other end of this. So I think it's going to be a, I think, it's going to, I think we're going to go quite low now and quite high on the other side. It's going to be the buy of a generation. So very, very cool stuff. Now, let's change gears here for a little bit. Uh, I'm not a Bitcoin maxi by a long stretch, but I certainly, especially on this channel, I pay a lot more attention to Bitcoin than the alts. Um, and you are one of the gurus that I look at for knowledge about the altcoin market, the altcoin space. Um, you cover a lot of different alts. So I'm very, very curious, you know, what are you thinking about the, what's the sentiment in the, in the altcoin world right now? And on that topic, see, I, I think Bitcoin dominance um, needs to go up to really punish the alt not because they you know there's some philosophical thing on a bitcoin maxi all coins need to be punished it just it needs to be cleared out all coins are a little bit overvalued and there's money's in a lot of bad projects and that needs to be cleared out those pro projects need to go down and that'll be reflected in a rising bitcoin dominance so i'm kind of targeting at least kind of 60 percent dominance um before we see the end of this um what are your thoughts on that it's horrible right now. That's what I'll tell you. You know, the Bitcoin maximalists are having their heyday. You know, they're really excited that they're down 70%. You know, and they're like, altcoins are down 90%. Ha 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 ha. You know, and I just think that's so funny. Like, you guys are down 70%. You know, your, your currency's been around for 13 years. I would hope it's the biggest network. I would hope it's holding up a much better uh, compared to projects that are two, three, four, five years old, you know. Uh, but what I would say is, is this with the Bitcoin dominance, uh, you know, especially. I love your target range, your 50 to 60% range. Benjamin Cowan, another very well-respected YouTuber. I really enjoy his content. He does believe it's going to go to 60% in the last bull run. I think we got, or in the last bear market, I think it went to 75, close to 80%. Uh, he's expecting 60%. My number is 55%. I actually don't know because the market is, has so many more stable coins. And you actually mentioned that the Bitcoin dominance has come down a little bit in the last couple of days. And I believe that's because people are moving out of crypto into stable coins right now. That's not really a statement on, you know, people moving over to Ethereum or Cardano, even though Cardano has done pretty well, been holding up pretty well this week. Um, I, I think that's what we're seeing. And, you know, the, the Bitcoin maximalists, they love to talk about, you know, I, I had a tweet about this the other day. They love to talk about 99% of altcoins are going to die. Name them. Name them. I want some accountability. I want these people to start naming the coins that they think are going to die. Because if you're naming coin number 748 on coin market cap, yeah, obviously it's probably going to die. I want to hear these Bitcoin maximalists come out and start to saying, no, no, Ethereum will be dead by the next cycle. Cardano will be dead by the next cycle. XRP will be dead by the next cycle. Uniswap will be dead by the next uh, by the next cycle. I want the accountability, and they're not willing to do that. That's what you see. It's because what the Bitcoin maximalists like to do is they like to cast shadow on the entire altcoin market without being specific, and that's not really helping anybody. So the altcoins we're looking at right now, if I, if I were kind of look at my tiers, and I certainly, in the earlier days of my channel, you know, we were looking at 1,000x coins, trying to go down, way down coin market cap and find gems. People like that. I've learned that it's more about giving my audience what I think they need, not necessarily what they want. A lot of my audience, that's what they want. They want degen coins, but they're just not safe, guys. They're, they're just not safe over time. Almost every project we covered in 2020 is you know, either dead or down tremendously that was in those lower ranges. It really is like getting the scratch off lottery ticket. And I do think there is some, you know, there is some room in your portfolio, maybe up to 5% for some more speculative uh, coins, maybe in the 100 to 200 range, maybe a 1% on a coin you really like that, that's new, that's way down the list. But in general, the vast majority of your portfolio, almost the entire thing should be going into coins that you feel very safe are going to be here in four to five years. Uh, 10 years even. And I think when you look at those, Ethereum, I think Ethereum passes Bitcoin and market cap by the end of the next cycle. I thought it would happen this cycle. Uh, the interesting thing is we didn't get the blow off top. Like you mentioned, if we had gotten the blow off top for Bitcoin and then we saw the dramatic pullback as altcoin season would have taken off, I think Ethereum would have gotten very close, if not slightly past the Bitcoin market cap. But we didn't get there. So at this point, it's hypothetical. I think in the next cycle, we will see it. You have the ETH merge coming up, which people call the triple halving. They call it that because it's a one-time only event, once in its lifetime, to where Ethereum's inflation rate is going to go from 4.3% to 0.4%. It's going to be reduced over 90%. 
And this is big. That means in, in 10 years, we're going to get as much new Ethereum as we have been getting every single year. And a lot of people have the problem with Ethereum not having a max cap. So I do think that the, that that's a, a sure shot winner. Um, I believe XRP is a sure shot winner. I, I no longer believe they're settling with the SEC. I think they're winning the, the Ripple versus SEC case outright. Uh, you look, you want to talk about suppression of a bull run. No coin was suppressed more than XRP was due to getting delisted off every major exchange. It's almost impossible for people to buy right now, especially people that are newer to crypto that don't have a, a firm understanding of all the exchange options out there. If I want to buy XRP, I can go over to KuCoin or Uphold. But the average person who comes in that's new, they don't even know where to get it. They hear about it. They're excited and they found they can't get it. They just move on. So once this case ends, it's, it's officially not a security. It gets relisted. I think XRP has got tremendous upside. Cardano, I believe, is the only coin out there. Maybe Polkadot, but it's got a lot to prove so far that eventually can compete with Ethereum. Uh, Cardano also has its Vassal hard fork coming up soon, uh, which is very bullish. We've seen bullish price action. That is why Cardano is holding up better right now than other coins. On the next tier down under that, Sandbox, I mean, I, it's going to be absolutely massive. If people saw the land that we built, the game that we built for our land in Sandbox, they would be super impressed with it. The gameplay is phenomenal. Uh, metaverse, NFTs, it, it's all wrapped up into one. I believe uh, Sandbox is going to have a gigantic head start on every other major metaverse project out there. So almost all other metaverse projects I would run away from right now in the short term. But I do think Sandbox is worth accumulating. I think FTT, CRO, these are coins that are exchange tokens. We know that in the last bear market, exchange tokens stood up much better than a lot of the other projects. You look at their giant marketing budgets, their lobbying budgets. So they're in Washington getting stuff done. Uh, I think FTT, which has hold up, held up extremely well in this bear market, is another great one uh, to look at. Uh, HBAR, Algorand, those are ones down the line. When prices come lower, I might start looking at. But those are the major altcoins uh, that I would say the, the, that we're looking at and we're very confident in right now. Good stuff. So you mentioned Ben Cowan in there, um, and that t just a great YouTuber, really interesting. He's famous for his regression band, um, and it goes by a lot of different names. He's been around in our industry for a long time. But I just think the big thing that I'm really curious about here is are all of those models going to be broken to the downside because the macro is just so darn bad right now? Now, you've kind of already answered this because you said your, your target's kind of 10 to 14,000. So I guess that means you're kind of expecting the regression ban to get blown out to the downside. I just want to hear your thoughts on that. I think that's right. I think we are. Look, this is what I'm about to say is factual. We are heading towards an unprecedented event in crypto. What do I mean by that? Well, historically, Bitcoin has drawn down 85%. That puts it at $10,300, 10366 from the peak is the exact number. But we also have never gone below the previous cycle top, which is $20,000. One of those is getting broken. Which one is it? Well, we don't really know yet. We're very close to going below $20,000 as we hit, I believe, uh, 20600 on some exchanges this week. We might, by the time people are watching this video, if the Fed meeting has already occurred, there's a chance we're below that right now. But we are heading towards something unprecedented. And I think you can only really reasonably um, you know, uh, say that uh, because of what happened with the top of the bull run getting suppressed. We didn't get the parabolic liftoff that we thought we were going to see. And that has kind of thrown everything off. Um, I, I just think when it comes to looking at a target, I, I lean much more, which by the way, if Bitcoin went down to about thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000, that would most likely indicate an 85% drawdown of the total crypto market cap. And if you go back and you look at the last cycle, the total crypto market cap and Bitcoin were, were uh, both drew down about 85%. This time, the crypto market cap is a little bit higher of a number than, uh, you know, the Bitcoin market cap would be or, or, or the, the decreased amount. Basically, 85% drawdown for Bitcoin is 10,366, 85% uh, drawdown from the crypto markets. If we kind of apply reasonable Bitcoin dominance, that would put Bitcoin at thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000. So I think that is a really solid range to be looking at. The main thing that makes me lean towards we're going lower than 20,000 is just the time frame. If you look at the time frame of bear markets, we generally bottom about one year, 13 months after the top. 
The top was in November. Now we did map out, you know, there, there was a false top theory saying that the, the retail sentiment actually left at 64,000, which would mean right now we could be somewhere in the midst of a bottom. But I don't think that's true. Basically, the idea was is that the, the 69K top was an institutional driven dead cap bounce, dead cap bounce meant to act as exit liquidity for the institutions. That was the theory. We don't know if that's proven incorrect yet, but we're definitely very close to proving that incorrect uh, You know, if, if we continue to drop. Traditionally, end of November, that is when we should see the bottom. Because of that, if you look at Bitcoin right now being 20,600, or, or right now it's like 22,000, but it dropped that low. Looking five months into the future, with all of the crazy macroeconomic stuff that we have, it's hard to say that right now we would be close to a bottom. And, and so um, I, I do think we're seeing something unprecedented. So I do think there is possibility that we're going to break a lot of reliable indicators uh, over the next few months. I think that's a very good point and a fine place to end. I've been saying that on this channel for a few months. Uh, ben, so, thank you so much for being here. Why don't you go ahead and share with people how they can get in contact with you. Let us, let us know your socials. Just look up BitBoy Crypto. You guys can find me. If you're interested in learning more about crypto, you can check out bitlabacademy.com. That is our, our uh, kind of university for getting people into crypto. It's got everything ranging from beginner to expert. And of course, we have new courses added every single month. So it's always dynamically moving. All right. Thanks so much, uh, guys. Really appreciate you being here. Please smash up the like button if you're a big fan of Ben. Um, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to stick around. And go ahead and let me know in the comments. When do you become a buyer? What is your price target where you come in with either a little or everything you've got? Is it 10? Is it 14? Is it lower? Is it higher? Let me know in the comments below. I can't hear. I can't wait to hear from you guys. Take care and I'll see you soon.